Good afternoon. I'm Carol Looper. I'm a member of the CMC board and a retired television news reporter and now volunteering in a number of areas. It's very good to see you all here today. Today we look forward to a discussion about the art and business of Ohio tourism, brought to us with support from the Ohio History Connection and in partnership with Experience Columbus and the Ohio Travel Association. Please let's thank them. You may have seen it, Tourism Ohio has just premiered a brand new campaign, Ohio, find it here. We all know that the state is a great place to live and work, but this message is designed to get people to come and visit. And their visits translate into big business, big money, and jobs for those of us who live here. Let's listen to the experts as we explain and explore tourism in Ohio. Please welcome Tourism Ohio Director, Mary Kuzik, President and CEO of the Ohio Chamber of Commerce, Andy Durrell, and reporter, Ohio State House News Bureau, Joe Ingalls. Now, Mary's gonna provide some opening remarks, and then Joe will lead the discussion. Mary, the platform Carol, is yours. Thanks, and thanks everyone. It's really great to be here in Ohio History Connection, especially thanks for being a sponsor today, Experience Columbus and the Travel Association. When I started this position just a little over two years ago, I did what any of you would do. I benchmarked the competition. And I looked around and understood who our peer set was competitively, and I tried to learn more about them than they know about themselves. So think about this region of the country, and when I describe them to you, it, then you think which state this might be. We've got um, numbers to share, and those would include 200 million tourist visits a year, a 40 billion, 40 billion with a B, dollar spend, more than 400,000 jobs, and the people who visit that state want to spend time outdoors. Ohio, find it here. <laughs> That's our very own state. Ohio is probably the biggest destination brand people haven't heard about. And our teams know that you can't buy a brand you haven't heard of or that you're not aware of. And that is the challenge and the opportunity of Ohio. Jody Burroughs is here, and she's on our Tourism Ohio Advisory Board, appointed by the governor, and um, Brian Ross here at Experience Columbus is as well. The way we started to tackle that problem was, you know, we all thought you can't have a brand if you don't have a plan. Like, if we don't know what we want to get done, it's pretty hard to understand how to position ourselves in the world. So what Tourism Ohio does for you, and we spend your money, I spend, help spend your money on your behalf to promote this great state, to grow those jobs, and to create a tourist economy, when we do that, we do that with the vision to create Ohio as a destination of choice. A destination of choice. That's our vision. That's where we want to go aspirationally. The mission, the way we're going to make that trip, how we're going to get there, is that we are going to aggressively promote this state and that we're going to do it in a way that supports the tourism economy in this state for prosperity and for the good of those communities. So you can't buy a brand you don't know about. What we did find was that there is low awareness. We did a lot of work. The state of Ohio has done a great job, and I know Kim Perfect's here. Marilyn Tomasi, who is, has been in this role also, is um, a member of your board and very active here. We have lots of, thanks to them, we have lots of quantitative data. That data tells us what happens, who comes, from where they come, how long they stay, how much they spend, and that they like to spend their free time outside. We have a long history of that data. So we understand the trends. What we didn't have was the why. So as we found partners to help us in our journey, Doug McIntyre is here at Cult Marketing, who helped us do this. And what we did was qualitative work. We knew, we knew a lot about the what and nothing about the why. And the qualitative work, we did it in two ways. I know lots of you do focus groups in your businesses and your work, and there's a great role and a place for those. Primarily when you have a concept, a hypothesis, an idea that you want to share. We didn't know. So the work that we did was in the space of ethnographic research and something, which if you know Doug, you would know why I reacted this way. It's called narrative logic, which is their proprietary approach to narrative science. So as a marketer, I'm thinking, that is a bunch of 
BS, narrative science, like what is narrative science? And you can Google it or ask him after, but it's basically getting at the core of, of your thoughts and what you think by using there. I come to find out there's like four storylines in the world. So if you write a book, they're going to be based on one of those four. And, and we use those um, sorts of qualitative work in order to really understand what people thought and how they felt about travel and about Ohio. And some of the things that we found um, along the way as we began to connect the dots was in fact that, um, and we had 142 hours of this tape. Our intern Justin is here, he has watched it all. I, I know he has, I've watched a lot of it. Um, Doug and I helped sat in on the interviews. But what we found were a couple of things to help us start to decide how we're going to position this great state and turn heads to Ohio. One was we have very low awareness. People don't think about Ohio when it comes to travel. They didn't think about us as one thing. We don't have the islands of Hawaii. We don't have the Tetons. We don't have the beaches they have in Florida. We're not Manhattan. They didn't think of us for one thing. Now, I'm an optimist. And when people, we would ask people, what do you think when you think of Ohio? Um, we didn't get a lot of, oh, here's what I think of. So I, I'm an optimist. I think they're just at a loss for words. They're a little speechless when it comes to Ohio. <laughs> They weren't real sure. But I looked at it as an opportunity, because those of you who market your businesses, your organizations, your ideas, you know that if someone has a neutral opinion, it's a lot easier to move that to positive than to move from negative to positive. So I saw that as a real opportunity for us. Um, the other thing is that people didn't um, think of us as in any way hip or cool. Not that hip or cool is everything, but um, the problem was when I took this position, the governor thought that I should help people know that Ohio is hip and cool. And people didn't think of us as hip or cool, they thought of us as normal. <laughs> that could be an advantage right now in this political environment. Normal <laughs> could be good. They thought of us as normal or average. They thought of us as people who had a lot of farms around them. I'm from a farm. I think farm, those pastoral scenes, I think they're gorgeous. But they weren't turning heads to Ohio to make people want to know more. So what we also were challenged to do by the governor and Director Goodman, where tourism lives at Development Services, was to think big and don't be afraid to do things differently. Take a chance. It's an opportunity to break through, do something differently, and to do something that could be broadly applicable for our tourism industry partners to be a compliment, Ohio find it here, for our family of brands at Ohio. Kim Perfect, who's here, they did a great job of the corporate branding for our state. When you see the O and the HI, I mean, it, it's well done. This is a great compliment to that. Our goal was to turn heads to Ohio to make people want to know more. We know that you can't buy a product not only that you don't know about, but it, you have to remove the obstacles to purchase. Through all that quantitative work, we know two things about Ohio when it comes to a destination and to travel. Those two big things, I think, from a, a, a history, a career, working with consumers and marketing, is that we are easy to get to, so there is easy access. There's not an obstacle to buy, we're easy to get to. We have the gift of population, we have 11.6 million people in Ohio, and we are our own best customers. We are willing to travel from Cleveland, spend the weekend here, go to the Hocking Hills, go to Cincinnati, and we all do the same. And that's really important, because out of the 200 million tourist visits that we get in Ohio, 160 million of those are Ohioans. We are our own best customer. And you know what about the other 40 million? They come because we ask them. Because we promote Ohio, we recommend that they, if they're in our professional organizations, they bring a conference or a convention here. We enthusiastically invite family and friends to come. Those are the two biggest drivers of why people come to Ohio. So we're our own best customer, and those um, trips to Ohio that we all take, as well as those from contiguous states, are really, really important to us. What we still didn't quite know was why. When we spent that ethnographic research time, we went to people's homes. I went to people's homes. They gave us an hour and a half, two hours. And we asked them about all kinds of facets. That's how we know what they thought of Ohio. We asked them to bring images of the things that they think of when they think of Ohio. We asked them to tell us about their trips, their trip of a lifetime. Trust me, not one of them was to Ohio. And once again, I'm an optimist. I don't take that as a bad thing, because when you're doing 200 million visits, we have volume. We're easy to get to. The second thing people tell us, we're affordable. The tourism researchers told me, affordable. Mary, I don't know what you're going to do with affordable. You're going to have a sale? I mean, what are you going to promote about Ohio? 
To me, affordable means great value. So not only are we easy to get to, but your money goes a long way when you spend time in Ohio. So what we really needed to get after when we had those visits in people's homes was to understand why you travel. And whether it was that trip to Paris, because that's where we got engaged, we put the locks, the padlocks on the bridge, or whether it was going to Steamboat Springs for a big family vacation, or that once in a lifetime trip to Hawaii, they told us the same thing over and over. When they showed us souvenirs, they told us the same story effectively, and that's because I got to spend time with you, with the people who mean the most to me. And they told us about the memories. They told us the first time they're little, little grandchild, first time the little went in the water. It was those kinds of stories they told us over and over again. So that's where Doug's team really worked with us to connect the dots to understand no matter what it is you get to do to travel, the thing that really means the most to you is the time you spend with the people that you really care about. And so that's how we ended up with our brand direction and that the very, very act of travel really does facilitate this altered mental state. I think that's why, I mean, I always just thought I was a little greedy, but I think that's why when I'm done with one trip, isn't it, I mean, you're a little melancholy and a little sad. But when you have another one planned, then you're enthusiastic again about the in-between time. So I think that sums it up and that our brand positioning really became understanding it's the emotional benefit that we all seek and that people make decisions about all things. Whether you analyticals think you do or not, it is your head and your heart. It's facts and feelings. An easy example, not everybody digs cars, but the people who do, I know there are spreadsheet people. And same with a house, you get your spreadsheet on what you're gonna do. But you tell me you don't get in that car and just kind of think about how that's gonna look when you pull up to my house for the weekend. Or how that house will be when everybody comes and gathers for a party or for the holidays. So it's our heads and our hearts. And so that was really the breakthrough for us that helped us understand that it's the opportunity Ohio brings for those meaningful experiences that you share with the people who mean the most to you. And because there are few obstacles to buy Ohio and we have an abundance of diversity when it comes to activities and events and places to go and things to do, that it's really, really easy. So that's how we focused on the emotion the joy, the happiness, the excitement, the shared connections, love that you can find here in Ohio. And we're doing that. If you've begun to see the, um, the television advertising, you, and there's a, it's a, on the television, the screen outside here. But what we want to do is turn your head through arresting music and compelling images. We want you to want to know more. So with that, I know you all want to know more. And Joe, you're going to help us do that. Well, thank you very much for inviting me to moderate today's discussion. And I look forward to hearing about the opportunities of new tourism here in this uh, campaign, the opportunities for entertainment and business. And so to talk about the business opportunities, because Ohio tourism is huge business, as Mary pointed out. Um, Andy, I want to ask you, first of all, with the business elements in mind, what do you think the economic impacts will be of this campaign, and how does that compare with others? Ooh, a toughie to start out with. Predict the future. <laughs> Jeez, I thought this was an easy crowd. <laughs> um, as Mary says, with a blank slate, I think there's nothing but upside as we look at this. Uh, because, again, we, we hear this all the time when we're talking with companies about coming to the state of Ohio. It really is kind of this, you know, kind of blank stare of, well, you know, kind of why would we consider Ohio? You know, you don't have a beach or you don't, uh, and you say, well, what are you talking about with business expansion, Andy? Who cares about a beach or things of that nature? You know, every CEO that runs a company is not a robot. They're an actual living human being who has a family uh, who's concerned about having all the amenities that they would want. Uh, so they are very interested in the culture, uh, the, the arts, if you will, uh, the whole tourism thing. It all meshes together in the context of where am I going to go uh, and put my 100 jobs or 500 jobs or whatever it might be. Uh, so that's a big part of it. Uh, and so when you say, What's the chances? Is this going to move uh, the ball down the right uh, path? I don't see why not. I think it's a great way to approach 
a blank slate and give us an opportunity to start marketing Ohio and making it more known. And here's something we do know, and that is that as some research tells us, that as someone visits a place, then if they see advertising about that place, marketing about the place, that kind of reinforces the experience they've had, when you combine those two, and then you ask someone, are you willing to move here to take a job to Ohio? And we did this research on Ohio. Are you willing to move your company to Ohio? Are you willing to come to college in Ohio? When people have both experienced the state and seen the advertising, they're two and a half more times likely to do all of those things. So it's really a good partnership to work hand in hand. And, and it is amazing uh, when you talk to the CEOs a couple of years after they've been here, it's all positive. It is all positive in the context of what's available, uh, the cost of living, uh, the, the morals, the standards, the educational levels. I mean, you know, they, they all say, wow, I, I wish I'd known about this sooner, <laughs> really. That's great. That's actually, it's good to know that business feels that way about Ohio. But there are some areas of Ohio um, where we've seen that businesses are not so enamored. Um, in Columbus, um, you know, we've got problems with uh, taking people from the airport to the vi visitors, uh, visitor attractions around uh, Columbus. In other big cities, we see that connectivity with transportation and, and those sorts of things um, aren't as good as they should be. So let me ask you to talk about what you think are obstacles um, to the tourism in Ohio and the business side of it, and what should be done to try to fix some of those areas and, and make things more um, attractive to businesses outside of Ohio and people outside of Ohio? Hey, I'll start out. Maybe Mary's got a couple thoughts here too, but you know, one of the factors that I think we all overlook is we're living in this kind of instant gratification society. <laughs> and, you know, if I want to do it, I want to do it now. Uh, and I want it to be quick, I want it to be easy, uh, I want it to be simple. Uh, and so having a good transportation system to move people around, I think, is very, very important. You know, we're blessed uh, with a good system of, of highways great number of airports. We can always improve some of those, but I mean, there are many ways to get around in the state of Ohio. But I think as you start looking to the future, you, you've got to look at how can we move uh, people around uh, in, in other ways. Uh, my best example would be for you down in Florida. I mean, Tampa and Orlando, they're looking to put in uh, high-speed rail uh, between those two cities, and you'd say, well, why with Tampa and Orlando? Well, they have so much in terms of tourism from the Tampa area that goes over to Orlando that they feel they can up the game by having a high-speed rail between those two types of cities. Now, am I the world's greatest high-speed rail fan? I'm not sure I'm here to tell you that, but I think those are the types of things you have to look at in terms of moving people around so that they can say, you know, I want to do this in Columbus uh, this morning, and maybe I want to do this in Cleveland this afternoon, and by the evening I want to be back down at Circleville for the pumpkin show. I mean, you know, it can be that simple. Yeah, Mary, do you find that there are impediments with transportation in Ohio? Well, you know, the quantitative work that I mentioned would, would state quite the opposite, um, although we haven't investigated once you're inside the state. But the one thing I do know that, you know, as we elevate the experience of a guest and we have a chance to do that by making it easy to navigate, to experience as, men, as much as Ohio as they can, we know those are good things. And then to illustrate that Ohio is welcoming to everybody when we do those things. So, you know, with the growth of Uber and, um, you know, you mentioned instant gratification, I would say the growth of wineries and craft breweries make me want to find an easy way to get from here to Cleveland <laughs> versus driving myself. <laughs> so it just seems like the world, as we, the world changes, to, be, to stay relevant. That's part of our mission is to be relevant to consumers, which means you've got to perpetually be reinventing yourself and looking at the future the way Andy says a little bit. 
Are there venues out there, you just mentioned the craft breweries and the wineries, are there venues out there that um, are attractive in Ohio that people outside Ohio don't normally think of firsthand when they think of Ohio? I'll give you an example. That would be the wine industry in Ohio. There's some brand new research they're just sharing with their board today at lunchtime at this very moment that would tell you, when, we, and we saw it too, when we did research outside of Ohio, and there's a gentleman that I can see, and I know Justin can see him on the tape. His name is Ryan, and Ryan's from Nashville. Phil. And when we asked Ryan some things, like one of the things we asked and we found out there's this tribal aspect to Ohio, we showed him this Columbus Zoo picture and we were kind of going down this path of wonder if you told everybody we're the number one this and the number one that. Actually, it kind of hacked Ryan off. It was like picking a fight with Ryan because he's like, there's no way we have the number one zoo in Nashville. Just forget about that. But Ryan went on to say, he, we hear there's great wine country in Ohio. We hear there's great agritourism in Ohio where we could come experience harvest in the fall. I don't hear one Ohioan talking about the great wine country we have in Ohio. Not, well, if you own a winery, you might, or a restaurant that serves them. But there's a good example of where we have something that contiguous states, Pennsylvania people told us about wine country. So we're very enthusiastic that as we remind people, you can have these experiences with the people who really mean the most to you. And you do not have to fly. You don't have to go to Long Island in New York. And you don't have to go to Virginia. And you don't have to go to California. You're going to be pretty excited when you find a treasure like that in Ohio. So let me ask you, Mary, are there other treasures in Ohio, other places to explore? I'm sure there are. Can you run down some of the high points of uh, different places that people outside of Ohio like to visit when they come here? So uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm an expert when it comes to um, how to market Ohio. And I don't know every single thing there is available in Ohio, but I know what I like. And I like, um, when you talk about local in Ohio, it's local, local, local. Plus, we had the credentials to deliver on local, right? What is a big, what is a really important industry in Ohio? Agriculture. So when we eat local in Ohio, it is authentic, and it is real, and it is relevant. So you know, when it's local foods, and it's local wines, and the grapes, grapes get grown in Ohio, by the way. They get grown here. Those are nice wines, and those are nice experiences. Same way with craft brews. You know, people are planting acres of hops, right? It's modern agriculture, in a way, because it's relevant to today. So there are lots of experiences. We're known for amusement parks. Nobody in this region of the country has an experience the way we do at Cedar Point or at Kings Island. They just don't have it. Those zoos that we do have, we know people come to visit them because of their reputation. So we have so much to be proud about. That's part of why we're ad advertising in Ohio right now, because we need Ohioans to be proud of this state and be, a, you know, don't have a chip on your shoulder. Stand up really tall and say, Ohio is amazing. We have this and this and this. So we have lots of treasures in Ohio. Uh, I just want to jump in for a second because because I uh, talk a lot. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine. It's easier on me that way. Uh, but my good friend Stephen Canetto, who's here in the room, uh, and many of you, I'm sure, know him, uh, reminded me with an email this morning about how much the arts are part of the culture of tourism. And so I did a quick little research this morning just to try and define the question, so to speak, in terms of what, what does that mean? And you think tourism, you might think amusement parks, but you know, it's museums and zoos and historical societies and planetariums and orchestras and dance companies. And I, I've got three solid sheets, so if you want to take up the rest of the time for me to read yeah, them all. Don't you love it? So. The, the business guy is the tourism <laughs> expert. I love that. You have more than me on that. <laughs> the point being that I think it's hard to define that. But we need to market it all in the context of, of what Ohio has to offer because there is so much here in Ohio. And we kind of take it for granted. It's, you know, you live here and you, so you don't think about it. Uh, but like I say, as we talk to the business people anyway that experience Ohio, they all just start raving about it the more time they can spend here. And there's not a state in this region that offers the diversity, the, the size of cities and urban experiences, the quality of the out of doors. That's another reason why the branding, we're, as an Ohio tourism brand, we're focusing on, the, focusing on the emotional connection. But the beauty of it is, if you are a kayaker, you could have paddling Ohio find it here. Or if you're in business, it's talent, it's opportunity Ohio find it here. So it's the balance of the functional um, benefits that we have in Ohio as well as the emotional. 
And bringing that up, you're actually married. The tourism department, I understand, is working with other state agencies to get that message out there, right? Can you explain that a little? Because of the versatility of Ohio Find It Here, remember, we were told to think big and do something that can be broadly applicable. So we've had great interest from our partners, both throughout the state's tourism industry through a co-op program we do where they can sign up. And if they use this logo, then, well, we do pay them to use it, actually. But <laughs> that's supposed to be a joke. <laughs> but they are really enthusiastic about adding the Ohio Find It Here branding. And then within the state of Ohio, it's a natural for places like Ohio Department of Natural Resources with all you can find, find it here. Um, but the other place that we've worked with is the Governor's Office of Workforce Transformation. And they used Opportunity, Ohio Find It Here, to bring their partners together in that space. So it's really versatile. Now you said Governor Kasich kind of charged you with you know, making Ohio cool or finding how Ohio is cool. Can you, do you think find it here is the slogan that's going to get you to cool and, and where, what do you have to connect to get to that part? So a couple of things. One, um, the governor told me to make Ohio cool, actually, and I really can't do that by myself. The good news is Ohio is already cool. And yes, Ohio Find It Here will be amazing on delivering that. It's just like the emotion that if you haven't seen the television advertising, and I just mentioned the television because it's, we'll be using it digitally as well, but it's a, re, it's a venue to create a lot of awareness, mass market awareness, and it can, it can share and emote that feeling about your state in Ohio. What we need to do is turn heads. When we turn heads to Ohio and they come to Ohio.org, they go to the Ohio History Connection, then what you can find is that which relevant to you. So the opportunity we have for cool, everybody doesn't think the same thing is cool, but it needs to be relevant. And when it's relevant, we have an abundance of experiences that are relevant to many different segments. And that's how we'll be able to promote Ohio is through like, we have like 10 or 11 behavioral segments so that if you like the out of doors or if you like urban life, if you like the arts and museums and culture, if you like heritage such as the Ohio History Connection, you can find it here. So finding it here means exactly what? Does it, does it mean that you're actually finding something that you've never found before, or is it an emotion that's attached to that? I mean, we, we had the heart of it all for a long, long time, and we kind of knew that this was, you know, the center of everything from the heart of it all, but we never really knew what that meant either. Bingo. So that's what consumers told us. Yeah. So, so what does it mean to find it here? What are we looking all for? All those things, Joe, that you just said at the beginning. It's the emotion. It's time with my family. It's, it's being out of doors. It's great wineries. It's that pumpkin farm we go to every year. It's the cottage we rent on the lake. It's the boating that we do and the fishing that we do. So that's the beauty of it. It is broad. It's applicable. But then as we package it, it can be very, very relevant and memorable. Ohio, find it here. <laughs> Okay, so we know millennials, they have their own language sometimes. They, they don't really listen to radio as much as, as people my age. Um, they don't read the newspapers as much, but they use social media a lot. So tell me what you're doing to try to reach younger people and get younger people to come to Ohio and experience these things. So m most people ask us if we're just going to be able to market to millennials because they're an important emerging growing market and just slightly bigger than boomers. The beauty of Ohio Find It Here is that we really have to market to boomers and millennials and we love you Gen Xers and everybody in between. But as we do that, those are two huge segments that we cannot ignore. I like to make a joke and say, I like doing the same thing our millennial kids like. I pay for it often, and I have just as much fun. I might not be as aggressive with some of it. So we are really using channels, again, to find you to help you find it here. So it's digital. I mean, last year during 2015, 90% of our spend was in digital marketing. And from all counts, we're going to have a record year in Ohio in terms of tourists, visits, and spend. We're already seeing that with results from bed tax in places like Columbus right here. So we're going to have a record year. So the beauty of this is we're in social media. So you're in earned media, shared media, owned media, like our website. We're everywhere with the messaging. And we, the other thing we're doing is committing to staying in market as much of the 12 months constantly. Because remember what I said first? You can't buy a brand you're not aware of, you don't know about. So we'll be in all those channels in a very integrated approach. So 
12 years, uh, 12 months a year, you're going to be out there in the social media with something new and different in or the way, same yep, message? Talking about, no, we're going to stick with, we'd be crazy not to stick with Ohio Fine here. We just started with it. And that would be the beauty because you mentioned a prior campaign. The beauty of that campaign is that it lasted 16 years. It was across three administrations. And if you add up all the money that was spent on it, it's about, a, it's between 150 and 200 million dollars was sent, spent on that same messaging. So this is timeless enough, although it's very timely in terms of, I mean, I think the shirt turned out good. <laughs> it's timely and timeless. It can last a really long time. Okay. Well, in a few minutes, we're going to move to the audience questions. Um, but right now, let me uh, throw out one final question to you. How will, what criteria will be used to judge whether this campaign is successful and the money spent in it is, success, is successful? What I can tell you about that, now we've been running it for one week and one day already, but I've heard from more salespeople, so I'm pretty sure someone's seeing it. The way we'll um, evaluate it, though, formally, will be after calendar 16. Now, we evaluate pieces and parts um, in terms of what it's doing for us all along the way. How many clicks to the website, how many people are engaging with us for how long. So we're tracking that constantly. But our goals that our Tourism Advisory Board has led us to with our strategic plan are the number of visits, the number of visits from that spend the night, the number of people who come from out of state. So we have a whole um, scorecard that we use, a balanced scorecard, that include the metrics upon which we'll evaluate this campaign. But the big get is the more people come, and the more often they come, and the more they spend the night, the more they spend. And when are we going to see the outcome of those metrics you just mentioned? So those highline metrics, we won't get the data until next spring at this time, but the data for 2015, we would expect to have in a month or so. Andy, is there a moving at the speed of um, government on that one. <laughs> is there, a, real quickly, is there a business metric that you're going to use to judge it? Well, I, I, some of those, and just to follow up on some numbers uh, that Mary mentioned, when you're talking about $40 billion uh, in, in sales, uh, you're talking about generating $1.5 billion in state taxes. Those go up, you know you're getting somewhere. You know, you're generating $1.1 billion in local taxes. Uh, again, those are very important dollars for, for local governments as well. Uh, so this is, it, it is big business. And so you can measure those types of things. I mean, we want a bigger bite. Uh, in the U.S., the number is actually $2.1 trillion are spent uh, each year in, in tourism dollars with the average international traveler spending about $4,500 per person per day. That's a huge number. If you just take even a smaller bite of that out and bring it here to Ohio, you can see it would have a tremendous impact. Well, it's the CMC's tradition to take your questions, so please feel free to go over to the microphone here, step up there, uh, state your name clearly, and ask your questions. And we thank you in advance for not making long editorial comments. Okay, so um, let me ask you, go ahead and state your name and ask your question, please. Well, I was going to make a long editorial comment, but... <laughs> My name is Stephanie Harper, and I have the pleasure of serving Mayor Andrew Ginther. And I just want to say I think you guys are doing an awesome job. I've worked for Experience Columbus before, and I know the amount of work that you put into these efforts. Um, you answered a question that I was going to ask about millennials. And I have two questions, actually. One, I think I recently read about a campaign um, or a strategic plan that you have to target minority travelers as well as maybe LGBT travelers as well. I'd like to know a little bit more about that. And also, Ohio has received some really great conferences and conventions over the last several years. How are we strategically targeting those people to come back, not as business travelers, but as tourists? So what I could tell you about the first question with regard to minorities and LGBT, we have, remember I mentioned different segments that we have a chance we can find you through our digital um, marketing particularly. So those are included among our segments. So that we, and then really we're fortunate in the state, our partners throughout the state at Convention Visitors Bureaus right here in Columbus, you're a great leader in terms of that, being sure that we present Ohio as welcoming to all. 
Um, with regard to the second, Ohio, Tourism Ohio, we, we don't have a sales team that's doing the work of bringing conventions, although we are always privileged and pleased to partner as our partners throughout the state do so. But I can tell you in an instance such as the um, convention that will be in Cleveland this summer, that's 50,000 people coming to one place in Ohio at one time. Our partners very much would appreciate visibility with that audience. So given the fact that we know from research, once someone visits Ohio, they are very likely to go home and bring others back with them and to tell our story. We'll be doing some promotional efforts there to be sure that those who come to Ohio know there's more to Ohio than just Cleveland. Although that's a great place too. Okay, okay. sir. Uh, not to be, uh, talk about a stereotype, but I don't know too many CEOs that don't play golf, and I didn't hear any of you mention golf, and we have, I think Mirfield's one of the top 10 golf courses in the country, and we have lots of wonderful golf clubs and wonderful golf courses that are really reasonable to play, and, and I wonder if you've given that much thought as far as maybe having joint ventures with those courses and to promote Ohio. Well, there's no question. It's not unlike the arts, you know, whether it's the Pizzuti collection here, the Museum of Art we've just invested in as a community. There are, there's that same quality when it comes to golf in Ohio. And some of the high profile events that have happened here, such as the President's Cup, for example, I think the U.S. Senior Open this summer, will also give us an opportunity to amplify what is being said about golf as we promote that in our channels to be able to get people to turn their heads to Ohio and think, whoa, that's in Columbus, Ohio. That's amazing. And get them to want to know more. Oh, it, it's, it, it's one of those little factors. That's right. It's on the list here. I could have, could have it makes a say, difference. had I gotten all the way down to the G's, it would have been there. Uh, read that list, Andy. <laughs> I still don't think we got enough time you left. Have that Ohio guide on your table. Come to our website too, Ohio.org, and we can help you find it. Great. Okay. Next. Hi, I'm Marla Rose from the Columbus Dispatch. Hi, Mary. Um, I I'm wondering over the next couple of years, your funding formula should allow you to get a little bit more money to use for your various efforts. Is Assuming that happens, you know, would we expect to see more of what you're already doing? Do you have wish list items that other states with more money already do that you can't do at this point? Or, you know, just do you have an idea of what that looks like if you get another couple million dollars? So here's what I here's what I don't really know. This calendar year, we'll spend between six and eight million dollars. We have about ten million dollars a year that we have available to us to cover every paperclip and every television ad that we do. So and the research and all of that in between. We'd like to spend as much as we can on creating awareness and keeping Ohio in the conversation. People buy tw travel twelve months a year, and you would be surprised. About fifty six percent of the people who visit Ohio do that between April and the end. Of of September, beginning of April, end of September. The rest of them are, are the 23% come in the fall, 21% of our guests come in the winter. So people are making decisions to come and to travel all year long. What I know the best thing would be, stay with Ohio, find it here, do that for a very long period of time. There are so many legs to this campaign, but to be able to continue to amplify our voice, whether that's with partners throughout the state, with, with traditional media, with earned media, to stay in that conversation to create awareness of Ohio as a destination of choice. Okay, next question. Uh, hi, Brent Davis. Uh, one of the things we'll find here this summer is uh, algae blooms and other issues with water. What's the implication on tourism with degraded water uh, in lakes and uh, uh, rivers? Well, here's, here's what I know. I'm not in charge of lakes and if, you know, meaning I'm not saying, here's what I know. It's important that we take care of all things that are natural resources and those things particularly that appeal to consumers as tourists, but those things are very important to our daily water supply. So to be able to present Ohio in a way that is safe and relevant is really important to our future for generations to come. So it's an important issue that we need to continue to focus on efforts to be sure that we present Ohio as safe and relevant. And answer your question. Okay, next question, please. Hi, Joe, Mary, Andy. 
I'm Stephen Canetto. I'm a public artist. I am an advocate passionately for the arts. And Andy, as you've touched on it, the arts are vital to our economy. And we tend to think of ourselves as a sports industry, particularly here in Columbus, but the arts in general generate exponentially more revenue for the state than the arts, or, or than the sports. Um, one of my proofs in point is a daughter who, leaving Columbus to go to school, said, Dad, I will never live in Ohio, much less Columbus. Well, this child, a millennial, is here, is bringing her friends to this city, and will never leave it. Uh, one, two things about the arts, and then a question. The arts have both an intrinsic and an instrumental value. Yes, we know they beautify our spaces. They sometimes make our architecture, love architects, more human. They enliven space. They also have an instrumental value. Tourism is huge in many places, as well as business, as well as increasing property values. When we spend dollars on a ticket for the arts or on a piece of public art, those dollars stay here providing money for jobs and businesses. So they build businesses as well. We have a lot of cities, Pittsburgh is one of the closer ones, that have walking tours. Fitness Columbus has a walking tour that features, amongst our historic sites, also features public art. It's dollars spent and pennies a passing. How can we, as a state, promote the arts in a better way as a tourist attraction, the way other states and cities like Manhattan and Pittsburgh are doing? So here's what I know about that. Our great partners are the Ohio Arts Council, Ohio Citizens for the Arts, the Greater Columbus Arts Council, um, those who do that work in Cincinnati and Cleveland. So we're, we consider the arts community a wonderful partner and an integral part of what we do every day in terms of delivering on a relevant experience for people who would visit our state, these cities, even small towns and galleries where people can afford the space, right, in these, in these renovated small town downtown. So the arts are quite diverse and we, we enjoy our partnership with the arts and we intend to continue to grow them. I, as a creature of the legislature, because that's basically what I do is go over and lobby, uh, I can tell you one of my senior execs works over at the Art Council now. Uh, she was very successful in helping get more funding for the arts. I think there's a growing understanding within our elected officials about the importance uh, that it plays in, in various venues in the community. So uh, I think that's it's been something that has been growing, not shrinking, which and, is good and, in this day. And something that you'll appreciate, which I didn't mention overall, is that when we talked about being considered a place that could be tribal or divisive about Ohioans, one of the things that came up was the OHIO part. And people, those of us who, and in Columbus especially, that's a really important thing. And there are a lot of alumni for who it's really important. But there are a lot of people who aren't a member of that group. They don't love that language. It becomes an obstacle for them to buy because they think a place like that might not be for them. So just when it comes to sports, I mean, I think the Ohio State University and all they do, well, they'll do great without Tourism Ohio. The arts is a partner that really needs our partnership and our help to continue to tell the story of the arts. It's a synergistic collaboration. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Question? Yes, hi, a Andy Campbell, thanks for being here. Um, as a beekeeper and someone who sells my honey, I'm wondering about the opportunities for small and independent businesses per to participate, both from the business perspective and the tourism side. Boy, uh, <laughs> I don't have any beekeepers in our membership at the chamber. I may sign you up so I have at least one, so I have a better answer for that. Um, 
So no, Mary, I don't. Good First luck. First of all, you know, local, local, local. And so what you're doing is really relevant. Then there are opportunities within, say, development services where we are. We don't give grants. We sure want to know about your story, though, because that helps us convey the authenticity and all that Ohio is about. It's people. It's stories. It's what you do. It's the way it makes us feel. So we'll want to know about your story. But then at DSA, there are opportunities for small business and, and loan programs and ways that we can help you actually establish that business because a big part of tourism are small business people. It's really important. You know, that's kind of a sweet question because if you think about it, um, this is something, it's something, I know it's punny, I know. But it, it is an area that's kind of growing because if you look across the street here at the Ohio State House, they have uh, put in a beekeeping area and uh, that will be growing and they're, they're featuring it on the tour. This is something we hear a lot about in different parts of the state, so that is an industry that maybe Ohio is on the forefront of it, but we don't really think of it. All that is old is new again. It's modern agriculture. Yeah. It's there local. You go. Yeah. Okay, next, please. And if we hear that Andy has a buzz on, we'll know that's okay, right? <laughs> A number of years ago, Columbus had a visual icon, which was Brushstrokes by Lichtenstein, and it was very effective. Newspapers all over the country said, we didn't know there was art in Columbus, Ohio. I understand the lawyers didn't write the contract right, so we don't have the right to use that anymore as an icon. But when we talk about uh, narrative sciences, good slogan, find it here. I wondered, what visual icons do you plan to use with the campaign? Uh, okay, but so here because I agree we, with you. We don't you. have a space needle or uh, a big thing around St. Louis has. Uh, what visual icons are you planning on using? Um, so, Roger, it's nice to see you. And um, here's what I'll say: the iconography we evaluated that too. Just as you're saying, we took all these destinations, including all of the state ones, because I want to know my competition better than they know themselves. Most of them use a word. They use some sort of font, and they use the word. So as we very mindfully chose to use the shape of our state for numerous reasons, it does conjure up the imprint of the heart. It lets us in the advertising um, morph that heart into the shape of our state. I'm convinced most people don't know the shape of anybody else's state, but I can tell you the way this one is shaped, it begs for the O-H-I-O -O right here to spell the name of it. So when we put this down and we put this in front of people to show them what comes forward. This stood out because of the iconography of the shape of the state. So to consistently use that as part of the branding will be rigor that we intend to apply. Maybe some buggies from Holmes County or something? <laughs> well, yeah. you find it here. Thank you. <laughs> OK, uh, next question. Good afternoon. I love tourism, so you've got me at hello. Um, and you should see Andy milk those bees. Um, <laughs> sorry, couldn't resist. We had it started. Um, I'm always amazed and frustrated at, at uh, our um, inferiority complex here in Ohio and in Columbus. And I guess I'd like to encourage all of us. I, I'm fortunate enough to be married to a man who grew up in Europe, and so we have family all over, about four different countries in Europe. It's so easy to come here. It took us six hours to fly to, he, uh, to Gatwick and three hours to get from the airport by bus, by uh, tube, by walking and dragging our suitcases to the bed and breakfast. So my, my question is, are there incentives for all of us in Ohio to be inviting our family and friends to come and visit us here because we can be the best ambassadors for our own community? When our relatives come here from uh, my mother and father-in-law are coming here for their first six-month visit in the United States. They'd rather tour, spend their retirement here than in Europe. How do we get that message out, and how can we as individuals be incentivized to invite our friends to come here rather than us traveling somewhere else all the time? There's nothing wrong with a good competitive shop when you travel somewhere else and see what's up. It also often makes us appreciate that which we have. But the, but the whole aspect of generating pride among Ohioans so that we're more than willing to refer, we kind of take, you know, it's like the people the closest to you take them for granted sometimes. And all that we have here in terms of the diversity and the abundance of the offering, we just take it for granted. It's like people who live in New York City and they never go visit anything. 
right? They're just busy working and living. So the enthusiasm, the most enthusiastic response we got when we asked people, what do you tell people when you invite them to come to Ohio? Well, it's going to be better than you think. <laughs> So I'm pretty certain we can do better than that. So <laughs> much of the advertising that we're purchasing, we're beginning with right here in Ohio so that people see those images and they're associated with those emotions and we begin to take notice of ourselves. I hope you enjoyed today's forum. You can view and share today's forum and all of our CMC's forums on CTV Columbus Television and on WOSU and PBS affiliates statewide through the Ohio channel and anytime on CMC's website via YouTube. Please again help us thank our sponsors, the Ohio History Connection, our partners Experience Columbus and the Ohio Travel Association, and our wonderful speakers, Mary Kusick, Andy Durrell, and Joe Ingalls. And thank you for being here. We look forward to seeing you again soon. And remember, next week at the Boathouse.